This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and I just got a great package from Adam, a locksmith in Wyoming. Let me take you through what he sent me. First, we have a Quickset Smart Key Core, and we were talking about how Quickset recently redesigned the sidebar on that. And he said something to me that only a locksmith can say. He said, sure, they're doing exactly what GM did in the 1930s. And sure enough, he sent me this GM lock that has the same squared off sidebar as the Quickset redesign and a mechanism that looks surprisingly similar to what Quickset uses in their locks. So I'm gonna be taking a close look at that. Next, we have an Asa twin mortise cylinder with some pretty awesome bidding. Adam, if you think I'm getting into this anytime soon, you have way too much confidence in my abilities. And then finally, a really nice little Euro profile cylinder. It's an Abus Pfaffenhain lock that has an absolutely ridiculous curved keyway with lots of little bits of warding. Abus advertises this as a pretty strong anti-drill, I'm sorry, anti-pick feature but whoever came up with that has never seen my video on how to pick paracentric keyways because they left the whole bottom of this keyway wide open. That allows us to take even this thick 25 thousandths pick and we can move right up behind the warding there. So I think we can probably pick this guy open and that's exactly what we are going to try to do right now. So let me put this guy in the vise and we will get started. Now one of the issues with this keyway that it presents to us is the fact that there isn't room for a traditional tensioning method. If you look at the top of the keyway here, you could only fit the most flimsy of tension wrenches in there, and with the bottom of the keyway, well, we need that for our pick so we can't waste any of the room on a tension wrench. So I'm going to take advantage of these two shoulders that are cut in the front of the core and insert a wiper insert right there and use that to tension the lock. It works very nicely. Okay, let's get started. One's loose, two's loose, three is loose, four is loose, five is binding, got a click out of him. Six is binding, got a click out of him. Back to the beginning, one is binding. Okay, we went into a false set there. Moving on to two, counter rotation, got him set. Nothing on three, counter rotation on four, got him set. Moving on to five, got a little click out of him and six opened her up. So even though we have a really radical keyway, curved and lots of bits of warding, we did manage to get it open. Okay, let me flip this all the way around. And I want you to notice something as I do this, that I think there might be a mistake with this lock. I think it's supposed to hang up right here with a little trap pin set up, but it does not but we're gonna leave it right like that because that's the position we need it for, for the gutting. So let's take this guy apart and you can take a look at a relatively complex lock. Okay, first thing, let's get these clips off the lock. Okay, there's one. And, okay, there's the other. Let's get a pinning shoe. Okay, and that should allow us to, to pull this front cylinder out. Let's try that right now. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna put him in the front slot. 
and then we'll put the one we didn't pick in the back slot. Okay, and you'll notice this follower is just a little bit loose in this lock. That's because Abus went with a larger than standard core in this. It allows for a lot more master keying options, but it also means that most of the tools that we would use on a normal Euro, pro Euro profile cylinder will not work as they should. Okay, let's drop the cam mechanism out and finish with the gutting. Okay, I think I just, oh, I just messed something up. I messed that gutting up a bit, but I don't think we care about that side of it. So I'm just gonna dump what I lost here and I'll clean that up after I turn the video off. Okay, again, the side we did not pick, that's in the back slot. Okay, the side that we did pick, let's get the driver pins out. Let's see, a standard in one. Looks like a steel anti-drill pin. A spool in two. I think I felt a couple of spools while we were picking that. Another steel anti-drill pin in three. Another spool in four. We have a modified standard with some small ends in five and then the same thing in six okay let me show you what's in the core now let's drop out these pins okay in slot one we have a rather unusual looking key pin i'll explain exactly what that slot is for in a minute and we also dropped out a couple pieces of drill protection. I moved over to slot seven. Okay, key pin number two is not coming out easily, so let's try to push him out. There we go. Okay, keep in number three, four, five is another stubborn one, and six. Okay, then on the side we have an array of passive pins here. I'm gonna dump them all into slot eight here. At least I'm gonna try to do that. Okay, and as before, a couple are giving me some troubles. And I see at least three different size passive pins here, which passive pins are for key control, but you really have a whole ton of keying options once you start using different size passive pins. And then if you recall, I said that I was surprised the core didn't stop at one point. That's because we have a profile pin in the side of the lock here. And what that's supposed to do is, let me focus that, is drop into the, the lock until the proper key is inserted, and then it should be moved flush with the core. Then you can see it's on the same line as the driver pin for slot six. So if you don't have the correct profile key, that driver pin is supposed to catch right here, and it doesn't seem like that happened. But in any case, it's more of a key control feature than an anti-pick feature because if you know it's there, it's really not gonna cause you any troubles. Okay, I also told you I would explain to you what this strange pin in number one is. Let me zoom in on that for you. 
Okay, you can see it has that little groove there. That's the key pin in slot one. And what it does is fit into this little groove in the key. I suppose it's another key control feature. It requires the key to be cut in a strange way, although I don't really see it adding a whole lot of security past its key control advantages, because it certainly doesn't help in, in pick resistance, and I'm not sure really what else it might do. If you have any theories on that, please put them in the comments. Okay, let me give you a close-up of all of this. This video is getting a little bit long. Okay, on this Abus Vitesse, I think that's how you pronounce it, you can see all of our key pins are standard with the exception of number one, and that's called the in-top system. I didn't tell you that before. Then our driver pins, we have one and three are standard. They are also steel anti-drill pins, as are the key pins in slots one and three. We have spools in slots two and four for our drivers. And then we have those modified standard pins in slots five and six. In slot seven, you can see we have two hardened inserts. And above them, we have what's known as the profile pin. That's supposed to ensure that you have the correct profile key in there. Though as you can see, it really didn't work. Then in slot eight, we have three different size passive pins. I'm not sure how many passive pins are there, but you can assume there's at least four because they always have the option of having no pin in there. And that opens a whole lot of possibilities for master keying, key control, and different differentials. Then moving over to our core, you can see we have our six standard chambers, two slots in the front for drill protection. Then we have slots for our four passive pins and our key profile pin right at the back of the lock. Other than that, nothing terribly unusual. Okay, that's all I have for you on this Abus Vitesse. Adam, thanks a lot for sending me all of these great locks. To everyone else, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Thank you.